This is the all new Rhino Linux. A brand new Linux distribution with some really interesting and innovative features has hit the shelves and honestly, it is quite intriguing. A completely new desktop, an unseen kind of package management, hyper performance and many more cool things are the highlights of this new distro. Rhino Linux is a Ubuntu based, community maintained Linux distro that is making a shift in what qualifies as an Ubuntu experience. Because Rhino Linux, although based on Ubuntu, is a rolling release Linux distro. And it uses some cool tech to become a cutting edge distro as well. Yeah, we get even newer software versions than Ubuntu here. So what are the key features that set Rhino Linux apart? What are the new things that justify the creation of yet another new Linux distribution? Let's take a deep dive with the all new Rhino Linux and try to answer those, shall we? Having a good knowledge of Linux commands and being comfortable using the terminal really broadens what you can do with Linux and what kind of experience you are going to get here. So if you are interested in leveling up your Linux game, definitely check out my course Linux Mastery Express which is the fastest way to learn Linux and start using Linux like a pro. I'll teach you a set of commands that will give you the confidence to use Linux without even a graphical user interface. Then we'll dive deep and learn how to use the vEditor and master shell scripting with real life examples. After teaching more than 100 students in person, I've curated this course with the top things that will develop your Linux skills the fastest. So if you're feeling like your Linux game is stuck in the same spot for too long and you're ready to take your Linux skills to the next level quickly, check out the link in the description below and get your Linux Mastery Express. We are running a massive 45% discount right now, so make use of it. Let's start off by seeing what exactly this Rhino Linux is. Rhino Linux is an interesting fusion of cutting edge tech, superb innovation and tried and tested stability. At its core, it's powered by Ubuntu but with a twist. It's a rolling release distribution. So it aims to give you the latest and greatest of all the tech, all the time. Yeah, on a Ubuntu based platform. Rhino Linux also introduces a new kind of package management to a Ubuntu based distro and that can be considered the heart of this entire shenanigan. Developed by a core team of 6 people, Rhino Linux also offers its own exclusive desktop called Unicorn. The Unicorn desktop experience that we get with Rhino Linux is surreal for a lack of a better word. Unicorn gets inspiration from GNOME, Cutefish desktop and macOS and creates a sleek and functional user interface. First impression, the colors look ravish here. There's a dock which is the central control element of this desktop and here we get a quick launcher and an application grid to open applications. Now if this is looking too much like GNOME to you, you'll be surprised to know that this is actually based on XFC. Yeah, I'm not kidding. Along with looks, the developers are going for those performance points here as well. But you have to agree, transforming XFC into looking like this, this is pure artistic vision. Rhino Linux uses the solid groundwork that has already been done on XFC and creates something modern while also capitalizing on the lightweight and performance aspects of XFC. XFC looks and feels like GNOME here, it doesn't feel ancient. The dock used here is black, it offers a good set of customization options. You can change its location and change the icon sizes as well. There are also a few more dock themes here. You can go with the transparent option and try the GTK one as well. Rhino by default disables the icon zoom, but I really like this effect. A subtle zoom feels very responsive, you can turn that on. The theming here is interesting as well. A dark purple theme is used here and it completes that look along with this wallpaper and the dock. I like the vibe that we get on Rhino. Some people might prefer to use it like this but I'm gonna switch to a light mode. Yeah, I'm not a vampire from the vampire diaries. This is still XFC so you can go ahead and change things up. Mix and match stuff to get the look that you want. But what we get out of the box is definitely an interesting look. XFC is a good desktop but it does feel old. I like the work done here to make it more visually appealing. Zorin Light is another distro that makes XFC look really good. Rhino tries to get the best of both worlds, visual appeal and performance benefits from a lightweight desktop. Right now, it's working. I'm really curious about how Rhino developers are going to evolve Unicorn desktop and how it improves from here onwards. Overall, Unicorn is a breath of fresh air. Right when you think something like XFC is gone with the time, it comes back in a new avatar. Top points for the desktop visualization here. Rhino Linux comes with its own Rhino package manager. Rhino PKG is a wrapper that manages software using apt, snap, flatpak and packstall. Rhino PKG is a sort of wrapper for all these package managers and repositories. This lets you install and manage normal .deb software, snaps and flatpaks all from one place. You don't need to mess around with multiple commands here. Rhino package manager also installs software from packstall. And what is this packstall exactly? 
Packstall is a user repository that builds software for you. It's exactly like Arch user repositories, but for Ubuntu. Ubuntu repositories are very huge and contain pretty much any software you want. Software from Ubuntu software repositories can be installed directly. But what about software that is not available in the Ubuntu software repositories? These need to be installed by other sources. Packstall is an attempt to create a repository of such software which are not available directly from Ubuntu repositories. Now these repositories do not contain the actual software but instructions on how to get the software source code from GitHub and build it on your machine. Of course, the whole fetching, building and installing the software is done automatically by Packstall. Now there are certain distinct advantages that these Packstalls bring. Firstly, Packstalls let you install the latest version of all the software. Comparatively, Ubuntu repositories contain very old software versions. This is huge. Using Packstalls eliminates that one shortcoming of Ubuntu. Using these, Rhino Linux lives on the cutting edge of technology. It becomes the Ubuntu of tomorrow. Secondly, Packstalls can be created by anybody. All you have to do is create a pack script which contains all the information like the GitHub URL to get the software, how to build it, etc. This is exactly like AUR's package builds. With these, the users don't have to wait for the software to be compiled and uploaded by maintainers. And you can just go ahead and create pack scripts for software that are not available officially and share it with others. Then, as long as nothing major has been changed in the software itself, software installed using pack stalls can automatically keep updating without the pack script needing modification. Of course, if there are major changes, intervention might be needed. Rhino Linux uses these pack stalls at the core of the system. Packstalls also use app to get the dependencies and stuff, so there's a harmony between Packstalls and the system itself. But there is one big potential drawback of using Packstalls, and this thing cannot be ignored. Since anybody can create Packstalls, you'll come across Packstalls that have varying degrees of quality and security. Somebody can create a Packstall that doesn't get the job done effectively, maybe install subpar software or even mess up your system. Someone might even create a Packstall that installs malicious software on your computers. I said potential drawback, and yeah, packstalls can potentially lead you to get hacked. This is the reason we don't use user repositories but install software from official software repositories which are created by trusted maintainers. Now, am I saying that you should not trust the packstall people? Absolutely no, I'm not saying that. Pack scripts are accepted and pushed to the users only after the core team verifies the script. And you can always view a pack script and even modify it before using it. But the potential for you to get malicious code infections and get hacked is way bigger with user repositories. So be warned. I personally would not use Packstalls as of now. I would rather use Snaps or Flatpaks. That's the disclaimer. Rhino Linux uses Packstalls to distribute its own software. This is fine as everything is coming directly from the developers. But I would be cautious when installing additional software using Packstalls. Okay, moving back to Rhino Package Manager. To install software here, you run rhino pkg install followed by the software name. Let's try GIMP here. After searching for GIMP, it will give you various options to install packages and you can see we get options from apt, snap and flatpak here. But first you need to install snap and flatpak on your system for this to work. You can do that by running the command given in the description below. Once you select your option, the package will be installed using the respective package manager automatically. You can install multiple packages as well. You can see that Rhino Package Manager has a very neat interface. It gives out complete information to the users and we feel like we are in full control of the operation. I really like Rhino Package Manager but it's very slow. The searching part especially takes ages. The developers need to fix this. But overall, I really like the software situation here on Rhino Linux and Rhino Package Manager is a very good touch. We get to see some really cool new things here. Rhino Linux is based on Ubuntu, but it's not the same as Linux Mint or Zorin OS being based on Ubuntu. Rhino Linux heavily borrows from the development branch of Ubuntu, which is kinda like a testing version of Ubuntu. Another stark difference between Rhino and other Ubuntu based distros is, Rhino is a rolling release. That means Rhino installation will continually receive updates for the foreseeable future. We won't have specific version numbers that mean anything. Now many of you might feel like this is a very weird choice, choosing Ubuntu as the base for a rolling release. But the developers of Rhino want to tap into the rich technological heritage of Ubuntu and build Rhino in the framework of Ubuntu. And since they are based on the development branch of Ubuntu which gets new packages continually for testing purposes, they can test those packages and push them to the users. This is how they can feasibly create a distro that has a rolling release model. This also lets Rhino harness the best of both worlds that reliable and very well tested base of Ubuntu and the excitement of access to newer software versions. 
While Ubuntu is great, it does have a slightly slower release cycle for packages, which can often result in you using very old software versions. Rhino Linux will mitigate this issue to an extent. I did feel that Rhino could have based itself on Arch and be more efficient with its rolling release model. But the developers seem to have a strong preference for Ubuntu's features and ecosystem. And they want to build on top of that Ubuntu framework. We'll see how it'll work for Rhino Linux. But right now, Rhino is making great choices. Using Ubuntu for base, going with the rolling release model so they can improve Rhino fast based on user feedback. The developers can iteratively improve Rhino and push the updates to users. Both of these are great options for a new and upcoming Linux distro. Alright, moving on to the performance department, Rhino Linux just kills it here. It's running the XFC desktop, so that was expected. Rhino manages to deliver exceptionally good throughput while still looking good. XFC is designed to use very less resources. That's evident here as Rhino runs on a very low amount of RAM and CPU cycles. XFC running on low resources may not be news for you guys, but we should appreciate that it looks like this here. The Unicorn desktop experience is a fantastic combo of good looks and hyper performance. The system responsiveness in particular is great here. Opening apps, switching between them is really fast. In fact, I'd say faster than what we are used to in the GNOME desktop. But that's how it is with XFC. You get that extra pinch of responsiveness and using this system feels butter smooth. I've installed this system on a traditional hard disk drive and not an SSD. This system beats my Ubuntu installed on SSD with its snap apps. I just love old tech Linux stuff like XFC. Performance on things like gaming, rendering and compiling too is slightly better. Of course, your hardware will be the main factor to consider here. But yeah, Rhino Linux is definitely faster than average. You'll really enjoy day-to-day -day activities like browsing, doing some office work and other stuff here. Rhino Linux is the combination of Ubuntu base, cutting edge technology and a pure performance driven experience. This is one distro that has created its own niche and if it plays its cards right, let's just say Rhino Linux is here to stay. Rhino Linux is putting itself out as a developer friendly Linux distro. All the features that Rhino Linux is focusing on are aligned towards that developer centric experience. Rolling releases for one are great for software developers. A continually updated system ensures that developers have access to the latest of all the languages, libraries and tools all the time. It's important for developers to be ahead of technology. Rhino ensures that you stay ahead of the curve. At the same time, Rhino is Ubuntu under the hood. While the more tech savvy audience is very diverse in its Linux distribution choice, Ubuntu still holds a good rank there. And Ubuntu is the most popular Linux distro with most packages built for it. So it makes sense for a developer to be in that Ubuntu ecosystem. In fact, it's very beneficial for a software developer to be in the Ubuntu space. Rhino Linux as a computing platform is lean and minimal. There are no unnecessary add-ons or gimmicks here. Something like that becomes very attractive to software developers. If you just want to get some work done, Rhino can be just the thing for you. All these things make Rhino a great system for software developers. But yeah, if you have any mission critical projects, I would first install Rhino on a secondary machine and get a feel for whether it works for me or not. This is mainly because Rhino is the new kid in town. Generally, it's good to know what to expect before you put your eggs in that basket. Rhino Linux definitely has a niche target audience right now, but that doesn't mean you cannot give it a try if you're not a developer. Rhino Linux has exciting stuff for Linux enthusiasts, students and anybody who wants to give it a try really. Right now, Rhino has released its first stable release and in my testing, I found it to be usable. As a new Linux distro, there are rough edges here and there. Using Rhino makes you feel that now and then, but overall it's usable for everyday computing in general. The world of Linux is all about user choice and flexibility. Rhino Linux lives up to these principles as well, that's the appeal here especially in the software department. In our community, some people have a strong preference towards snaps and others towards flat packs and many others prefer full native packages strictly. Now for some people, this is like religion. Rhino's package manager is built to cater to all these groups of people and do that with full flexibility. When you try to install any package on your system, all options are presented to you and software is installed in the format that you select. And yeah, you can install some flat packs, some snaps and some .deb software here. That kind of flexibility is built into Rhino Linux. Rhino Linux is a breath of fresh air. It's a new Linux distro that is bringing some new ideas to the fold and some new kind of tech. It's always nice to see new Linux distros because the ones that grab attention are really innovative. While I'm not saying Rhino Linux is my favorite Linux distro now, it definitely is interesting. 
the UI is interesting, the package manager is interesting, and its approach of using Ubuntu development branch as the base is definitely interesting. The thing is, Rhino Linux has a good development team set in place and they know what they are doing. So I'll be watching where Rhino Linux goes from here. How the developers take the development of Rhino from here on. One thing that I really like here is the polish. A good set of Linux distros, when they release their first stable release, the priceless version 1, most of them will be hardly usable. Most of them will be buggy, have issues and definitely have a few things broken. You can feel that clanky user experience when you boot into a new Linux distro. I've even come to expect that when I try out a new Linux distro. While Rhino was not Ubuntu level polished, it was not bad either. In fact, it was surprisingly good. What didn't work for me? The package manager here was horrendously slow. It didn't seem to be getting software from pack stalled repositories and I did feel that UI was slow to respond in few areas. Trust me, this is called polished when we are talking about a new Linux distro. I enjoyed playing with Rhino Linux. You can give it a try by downloading it. The link is given in the description below. If you enjoyed our deep dive with Rhino Linux, definitely consider subscribing to the channel and leave me a big thumbs up. And if you are interested in leveling up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero within the shortest amount of time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Alright, if you had fun with Rhino in this video, you'll absolutely love this fantastic distro called NixOS. It's pretty amazing, so don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Techs, signing out.